I'd like to talk about the highly beneficial state of operating from equanimity in your life. Wikipedia describes equanimity as coming from the Latin term equanimitas, which is having an even mind. It goes on to say that equanimity is a state of psychological stability and composure, which is undisturbed by experience of or exposure to emotions, pain or other phenomena that may cause others to lose the balance of their mind. The virtue and value of equanimity is extolled and advocated by a number of major religions and ancient philosophies. For example, the equivalent ancient Greek term ataraxia means not perturbed and is characterized by ongoing freedom from distress and worry. It's also an important concept for several Hellenistic schools of philosophy, including the Stoics, Epicureans and Skeptics, the Stoics being my favorite. In non-philosophical usage, the term was used to describe the ideal mental state for soldiers entering battle. That's something to think about. I like it. Now, to be a person who operates from a natural and general attitude of live and let live, which is equanimity, is something I think is a virtue to have. Everything in your life gets healthier and improves. Your mental acuity gets better. Your outlook gets better. Heck, even your sleeping benefits. Having this type of generalized personality that is not stressed by life much and knows themselves quite calmly too may take a while though, especially for one who has been the opposite until now in their lives. Equanimity, in my opinion, is the progressive consequence that follows the shedding of your ego, internalizing philosophy and knowledge and self-actualization. Basically, you can't manufacture an authentic equanimity by mantra or sophistry or repeating sayings to yourselves. It has to be your natural state without even trying. Equanimity ties into many spiritual aspects I respect too, like accepting things as they are. This includes people too. There's nothing wrong with a lively or interesting discussion, but a self-actualized person knows when to cut their losses and to just walk away because they rationally realize there's no point wasting energy on trying to change another person. You can, after all, only change yourself. Now, when I was initially brainstorming the ideas in this video, my initial thinking was that of neutrality. You know, neutrality is mastery of your life. And I think it's still valid, though, like most things, it's a matter of what language works for you. I've mentioned in previous videos regarding self-actualization that the simplest and quickest way I recalibrate myself back to sanity sometimes is to remind myself that everything outside of me is a neutrality. This language happens to work for me quite easily and effectively, but you may prefer a different phrase. But the most important thing I find is to realize the rational truth of what matters. And that truth is, unless you can do something to alleviate your present anxiety, then don't worry about it. That to me is rational to the mind and comforting to the soul. Now these days, being calm and self-possessed seems to have gone out of fashion. I don't know if it's because life has accelerated so much, what with data speeds, video games and Red Bull drinks, that it's fashionable to now be an adrenalized emotional person. That even when it comes to simple good human things that are beneficial for the soul, we can't even speak calmly about them, but rather have to fist pump. Fuck yeah, meditation. Woo! Look, I know what the sentiment of not giving a fuck means when people are trying to healthily detach themselves from their egos and from external validation or being pushed, but it's a trap. If you hate loud bitches, then don't be a loud bitch yourself. It's that simple to me. That high energy of colorful marketing loud and long legs, fast cars, shiny phones and fuck yeahs is where the enemy lies, gentlemen. So finally, I would suggest try and be mindful when confronted by things that cause you anxiety or distress to not simply use the tools that are being handed to you by the world or your enemy and prodding you to fight them. Use the thinking that makes you feel good when you're alone. Use the stuff that makes sense. Use your mind, not theirs. 
What makes you feel like a giant when no one else is looking, when only you are present? That's the right thinking. That's the right direction. And then when you're out in the world and around lemmings and yes men and giggling bimbos and car salesmen, it all begins to bother you much less. Their volume gets lowered, they become less visible, and their insults, which once would cause you to fight back, are now a cause for laughter and walking away. Whether online or in the real analog world, be conscious of acting like the child you're fighting. Cultivate equanimity for your own mental health, gentlemen. Go your own way. Later. Please share, like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon once you've subscribed to be notified of my next video. And feel free to donate too. It helps keep me creating and uploading my videos for you to enjoy. Cheers.